in this episode, we're headed to a place that's always a dark and stormy night and day. Well, it's just kind of always stormy. This is a picture in a thousand words. Welcome to A Picture in a Thousand Words. My name is Mo Birkhan, and I'm the astronomer that's guiding you through some of the most gorgeous images in space. And this one we've got is absolutely wonderful. So this is an image that was taken with the Juno spacecraft. So this is a spacecraft that went from Earth and headed all the way over to Jupiter. And that was launched back in 2011, and it made its trip back over in 2016. And it's going to be continuing to orbit Jupiter all around, taking pictures until about 2021 as its current rate. So Jupiter is about 800 million kilometers away from the Sun. And what we're seeing here is about 60,000 kilometers on a side. What we're talking about is that's about five Earths all lined up in a row, all sort of together. And that's what we're seeing here. So it's a fairly large area because Jupiter is a large planet. So the spacecraft, the Juno spacecraft, has a camera that's looking in the visible light. So it's looking at things that are red, green, and blue. So you can see some of the reds in this image. You can see there's not a whole lot of green, but you can see a little bit of blue. It's all mixed together. So this is the kind of light that your eyes would normally be able to see. The camera also has the ability to see the near infrared, but that's not exactly what's being shown in this picture. And so what you're seeing is actually very similar to what your eyes would see if you were there. In fact, this looks a lot like what a telescope would see, just much, much clearer because the Juno spacecraft is actually around Jupiter itself. All of the light that you're seeing here is coming from the sun. So when the sun shines its light and it hits Jupiter, all of that stuff is being reflected and then you have the spacecraft that's kind of going around it and that is collecting that light. So when it's away from the sun, it can't actually see any visible light because all of that stuff is being blocked by the planet itself. All of the colors that you're seeing here, kind of the reddish brown stuff, a little bit of blue, kind of over here, darker gray stuff, all of that is coming from the absorption of the sun's light by naturally occurring chemicals in Jupiter's atmosphere. And these chemicals aren't nothing that you'd want to actually breathe in. So we're talking about things like phosphorus or sulfur or ammonia. So kind of nasty stuff. So you wouldn't want to be in Jupiter's atmosphere breathing the stuff in. You wouldn't last very long. All we're seeing here, all of this coloration that we're seeing here, all of that are clouds. It's a thick cloud deck, but it's actually only about 50 kilometers deep. So it's not very thick all the way down. It's actually just a little skin of the planet Jupiter. And that's the vast majority of what we see in Jupiter. So one of the first things you see on any of these pictures of Jupiter are these bands of clouds and gas. And they all seem to have very similar colors. And then you can see one another one over here. And then you see another one over here. And what's happening in these bands is that all of the gas seems to be moving in the same direction and they're moving quite fast. Most of this stuff is sort of in the hundreds of kilometers every hour, uh, up to, you know, the fastest is moving something like 400 kilometers an hour with respect to the rest of the gas. So it's really, really fast wind. This would be easily greater than hurricane scale winds if it was on Earth. Now between each of these bands, you can see these little areas that look like waves. So you can see them over here and over here and all of this stuff over here. And what's happening there is that when you have bands of gas, or any fluid for that matter, that are moving fairly fast, so this, is, this fluid is moving this way, this fluid is moving this way, what you end up getting are these eddies and swirls that are coming in and coming in because all of this gas wants to interact at that boundary layer. And these end up creating these massive instabilities. Now, the, you can see this on Earth as well. So clouds do this, all you know, currents and water do this. Even the waves on the ocean are caused by the fact that the wind is moving faster than the water in the ocean. 
And that is creating these exact kind of instabilities that are swirling up and causing things to kind of mix around. And you see them at each of these layers. And that's real, again, all being caused by the fact that all this stuff is just gas that is moving along one another really fast. So we're looking at something like a quarter of Jupiter. And what we're seeing over here is the famous Great Red Spot. So this thing is about the size of the Earth, so you can imagine North America would look something like that, South America would look something like that, Europe would kind of be over there, Asia and Australia can pop out. So it's actually huge. This is an absolutely massive vortex. And what's going on is that it's this massive storm that's been lasting for at least hundreds of years. And so you can see that it's sort of at the edge of two layers. One of these layers is going like this, and the other layer is going like this. And as it goes this way, it spins it up, and it ends up actually powering this massive, what would basically be an Earth-sized hurricane on the face of Jupiter. And it's been going that way for a long time. All of the red that you're seeing here is coming from basically naturally occurring chemicals as they interact with the ultraviolet light that's coming from the sun. That's producing this red color that we're seeing all throughout here. And it's just because it's all really being mixed up by this massive vortex. But Jupiter tends to be a super stormy place, so we see other vortexes like this, and this, and this, and they're all just massive storms that are being caused by the fact that you have this really fast-moving cloud layer that's interacting. They're all hurricanes, but in some cases, these are hurricanes that are the size of the Earth, but on Jupiter instead. Now, the really special part of this image comes right at the center, and this is an area that's called wide spot. Now, this was discovered by an amateur astronomer back in May of 2020, and just hours before the Juno satellite had passed right by it and hadn't actually seen anything. So this is a storm that just really came about all of a sudden. What's happening there, as you can see, is you're getting the tips of different clouds that are bursting through Jupiter's atmosphere. And that's what we're seeing in this. And it's just a new storm that appeared, really proving that there are new things that are happening in our solar system that we're just catching for the first time over and over again. One of this thing this image shows to me is that there's beauty in our own solar system that's always appearing and it's all fairly close to home. So it's a great place to look for some gorgeous space images. So that's all we have time for in this episode. Thank you for everyone who wrote in and suggested that we take a look at one of NASA's Juno mission images. The really cool thing about all the Juno mission images is much like this image, this all came from publicly released data. So if you wanna tinker with some images, you can actually go onto their website, and I'll put the link down in the description, and play with some of these images and create really beautiful renditions and colors. And so this image was actually created by a citizen scientist who could be anyone just like you. If you like this episode, please give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. We just want to get a sense of what kind of stuff you're liking. Feel free to leave a comment and definitely subscribe to get your latest fix of a picture in a thousand words. Our fun fact for the week is back in 1994, comet Shoemaker-Levy crashed into the planet Jupiter. The event actually took the world by storm and inspired such Hollywood blockbusters as Deep Impact and Armageddon. So without the comet Shoemaker-Levy, Aerosmith, the band, would never have had its biggest hit ever, I Don't Want to Miss a Thing. Until next time.